The Professional Insurance Agents is a member organization of local insurance agents who are also members of their communities. Professional insurance agents help their neighbors protect the property they value most, their automobiles, their homes, their businesses, their very way of life. The Professional Insurance Agents is an association that is dedicated to providing unlimited opportunities for its members since 1931. Professional Insurance Agents provide personal support and service plus a choice of insurance products to meet their needs, not just from one company but from many quality insurance companies that support the America's independent agency distribution system. Professional Insurance Agents are sponsors of their local Little League team, volunteer fundraisers for local charities, and active members of their local civic organizations. When there's a crisis, professional insurance agents help their neighbors. When there's a need, professional insurance agents are there. This could have not been tested or found to be more true than when Louisiana was hit by Hurricane Katrina on August 29, 2005, and again a month later by Hurricane Rita on September 24, 2005. I remember vividly, I was at my mother's house with my family and uh, the Saints were playing a preseason game on the Friday night before Katrina made landfall when the word went out that this was the big one and it was headed straight our way. Um, from that point on, all of Southeast Louisiana was um, very much under siege and knew it and uh, began plans evac for, to evacuate and to gas up and to pack up those sorts of things, um, myself included, and evacuated to central Louisiana where my uh, daughter and her family had just relocated to. I had noticed that the storm track for Katrina, which was supposed to move up the western coast of Florida, kept continually moving more west. We really weren't too sure at that point uh, what we were looking at, but we were assured by the National Weather Service that it was a large storm and there was going to be a very severe storm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now that the worst of Katrina has passed, as damage reports are beginning to come in, we pray that the loss of life is very limited, but we're fearful that is not the case. I am praying for the dead, the injured, and the homeless. And I also thank God that he made us a strong and caring people. I have deployed... Um, boats into some of the areas that, that we have, where we have heard reports of people stranded on rooftops. That would be primarily St. Bernard Parish and uh, Plaquemine and into New Orleans East. I have ordered the Louisiana National Guard, the Louisiana State Police, and the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to begin search and rescue missions as soon as weather conditions permit and they have um, they have begun those operations. They were also starting to come in reports about levees either overtopping or levees collapsing. No one knew for sure. Uh, then we got another report that uh, people were in the St. Bernard Courthouse and there was water as far as they could see. And so I knew that we were dealing with something very significant at that point. The day after the storm, uh, there was a rescue operation going on, but I knew that within about a week, we would be called upon to start the actual recovery process and that the insurance industry would be a very integral part of that. So I asked my staff and employees uh, to come in, even though non-essential personnel were being told not to come in, uh, I went on the TV and the radio and asked my employees, if you can get to the office, that we would like for you to come in and let's start preparing to help our citizens with their insurance needs. Most folks, and I would say the overwhelming majority, two-thirds or more, uh, referred to their agent as their insurance company. They didn't know how to get in touch with their insurance company, how to get uh, what the name of their insurance company was. Um, and, and for that matter, many of their agents, if not most of their agents, uh, had been devastated and flooded out as well in the southeast part of the state and had to relocate, evacuate, and couldn't get back to their offices such as they were uh, because of the military blockades that, uh, that were in place for weeks after Hurricane Katrina. It was overwhelming. I mean, our people 
uh, performed wonderfully. They, they showed up that day. Uh, they worked 12 hour days, seven days a week, fielding questions from uh, constituents here in Louisiana and did an amazing job. Almost every company was forthcoming, forthcoming with an offer of a stipend. In my case, my homeowner's insurer said go to a tent out on Corsi Boulevard off of airline and pick up a check for $2,500 to start paying the hotel bills or the rent that uh, one would have to uh, come up with in order to get a new location to house yourself and your family. Uh, the agents were uh, at the forefront of that effort because they know and have a personal relationship with their policyholder and also knew the devastating effect that this storm had had on their property and beyond that on the psyche of the victims of, of those two horrible events. I guess every New Orleanian has their Katrina story. Really? To me it's like September 11th or when we put a man on the moon, everyone remembers where they were on August 29, 2005 and what happened to their family and they can tell that story. I mean, we started the Saturday before, watching the news reports and weather forecasts. And when I saw the radar come up and that storm took up the width of the Gulf of Mexico, I told her, we have to start preparing to leave. This is the one they taught us about in insurance classes right. and the worst case scenario for New Orleans. I said, I really think we need to get out. So when you make that decision, then what does that mean, right? What about the family? You know, we had four parents, three of them in their 80s, that we had to prepare for. What are we gonna do? We need four hotel rooms, so we're gonna have to start that process. So I left, went to the office, started preparing files, raising computers, you know, did, uh, took my files that I thought would be critical. I guess probably, as it turns out, the best decision I made was grabbing my master flood list, which showed me all of my policies, insurance names, policy numbers, addresses, et cetera, contact information. That turned out to be critical. So we headed out, they had started the contra flow with the traffic where they were directing the traffic through and we hit the highway and made it to Little Rock, Arkansas finally. And kind of thinking maybe we got lucky watching CNN and the news reports and thinking, well, it's going a little bit further to the east, maybe New Orleans will be spared. And then we found out that the levees broke and that that was catastrophic. And so uh, after some shedding tears and worrying about things, we said, well, now it's time to deliver on the promises that we sell, those policies that we sold to our policyholders. So I took that master flood list out and just started filing claims. Margaret and I started calling and, and getting claims filed, collecting claim numbers, adjusters information, phone numbers and contact information. And in many cases, by the time my insureds contacted me, we already had a claim number for him. Here's your adjuster. This is his name. Contact him. Your claim's already been filed. So that worked out well in helping people get up and going as quickly as possible to get their houses fixed and uh, additional living expenses that they may need. So that worked well. My Katrina story is uh, I evacuated to Memphis and was there for about five weeks. And in that time, uh, my uh, agent, Daryl Frank, called me and said he had already filed all the claims. Uh, he figured Lakeview was uh, a little damp. And we had about 10 feet of water out here. And uh, when I found out that my house had power, which was a miracle, I came back. And it was around, I guess, October 14th of 05. And uh, I drove up Harrison Avenue. Uh, had seen some of my furniture down about four blocks away at an intersection at the light, came around the corner. And the reason I was coming was to meet the um, adjusters for the flood. And little did I know, all the windows were out here. And when I pulled up in my truck, he, the adjusters were crawling through the window. They had already been in here, made their assessment and we stood out front and they said, you know, they were going to max out the claim. And uh, a couple of weeks later, when I could find the 
right post office because those are hard to find. Um, the checks came in the mail. And uh, it was all taken care of ahead of time. It was like a piece of cake. It was the easiest thing uh, with the flood that happened to us. And then we were able to make a decision on whether we were going to rebuild, go open somewhere else, whatever. It was it, the financial part helped out. When you see the size of the storm and it covers the entire Gulf, you don't have to make any decisions but to get out. Most insurance stuff is a bunch of paperwork to me. Write the check and pay the premiums, but you never get a check back. <laughs> and this is a time where it was very important that we were covered and we, were, we had enough insurance and uh, and I don't know, just getting, getting the coverage gave us the opportunity to uh, make a decision whether we were going to rebuild or not. Now, as far as the housing goes, our houses, we didn't know whether we'd be able to live here. So we had to sit back and wait and figure out what we were going to do. Well, you know, there were so many stories about Katrina and what we all did. And I guess mine is several months very much like yours, Darrell. You know, here it was, Friday night at the Saints game. Guy next to me says, hey, the storm is coming here. I said, no way. There's no way, because I look at the stuff the insurance companies look at, and that's not going to come to New Orleans. He said, want to bet? So 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm picking up stuff in the backyard. Um, went down to the office, boarded up, grabbed the file server and two workstations. I don't usually do that, and I don't know what made me do it, but thank goodness it was. Packed it up in Charmaine's car, and we headed north. We went to Baton Rouge and uh, stayed with the boys in a college apartment with 15 people and five dogs. <laughs> so you know how those days were. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was fortunate enough that when I heard on Monday morning that the levees had topped in, in Chalmette, where we lived, that I had a place to go. So by that afternoon, we were hooked up and working on claims already. Uh, it was very difficult reaching people, as you had said. Uh, cell towers were down. Here we are in the city of Baton Rouge that has now doubled in size. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the gridlock of trying to get to Walmart to get a pair of socks and also maybe trying to go over to the insurance office for the professional insurance to get some supplies to work with. We uh, knew what we had to do to do for claims, but we just didn't think we had to do them for a couple of thousand people at one time. My wife and I uh, insured our home, our cars, and, uh, and my life uh, through our agent, Richie Clemens. Uh, when we first met with Richie on our insurance, he and uh, he went over the different policies and the different benefits of them, the uh, uh, deductibles and the, those things that meant something to us to meet our needs. Uh, this turned out to be a real good thing because uh, when Katrina hit, uh, those types of items really meant a lot to us for peace of mind. On the Monday when the storm had hit, uh, the news reports came over the air that uh, Katrina had uh, flooded all of St. Bernard Parish. And in our own naive way, you know, we thought, well, our neighborhood has never flooded. So, you know, it, the other par parts of the parish are underwater, but not us. And the reality of it was, you know, we had a few feet of water in our attic like so many others did. Uh, so the important thing here was that uh, we needed to get our claims in and, uh, and try to move forward with this. Even though Richie, lived in the same general area as we did, and he lost his home and everything else that was in his place as well. Uh, we found that he had set up an office in the insurance offices in the Baton Rouge uh, insurance building. So we were able to contact him and met with him. Uh, he had computers set up and printers and uh, phones. So he was able to print our policies out for us, uh, took the time to go over the benefits that we had in our policies, and we used that to uh, file as early as we could. And this became real significant to us because by doing that, we were able to look for a home 
and we were able to secure a loan in a very short period of time, just a matter of days after the storm, uh, and closed on that loan within weeks after the storm. By doing this, we beat the huge price increases that uh, went into the housing industry as a result of the demand created by Katrina. My wife and I survived Katrina, even though our home did not and one of our cars did not. But we did because we were prepared with the insurance that we had, the insurance plan that we had developed with our, with our agent together. August 29th will be a day that I will never forget. Hurricane Katrina had caused a lot of changes in our families and lives. Three days prior, my family and I had evacuated Tallahassee, Florida. We didn't know the severity of the storm. I remember waking up Monday morning with the concern in my husband's eyes and my mother's, my brother's. Everyone was nervous in terms of the anticipation of what was going to occur and the severity. When we saw the levees had broke, my main concern was my family that I had that lives in the Gentilly area that I knew were going to be extremely affected and my insureds. Watching the water rise, it was just nerve-wracking for us because we were, in a, we were in a state in a position where we couldn't help out, not knowing what the aftermath was going to be for us in terms of returning back to our agencies, how we're going to help out our insureds, how we're going to have access to our files, our networks, and so on. We did have an agency in New Orleans that we lost, and we knew that it was going to be very hard for us to control and get in contact with our insureds without them getting in contact with us beforehand. Luckily, we did back up information, but it did take us a good while to retrieve, to get back in contact with our insureds. We tried emailing, calling, texting, whatever way we could to reach out to our insureds to let them know that for anything, we were always there for them to get in contact with us. One of our insureds that I'll always remember, her name is Benina Forstall. We call her Benny. Her family lives in Gentilly. They've been with us for the past 15 years insured, home, <clears throat> And um, they bought their first daughter home and insured it with our agency, and we've known them for many years. My husband and I, uh, we purchased our starter home in, uh, I think it was 1998. A few days uh, prepping for to leave, uh, we decided at the time I was working at a hospital, so we left, actually evacuated the day of the hurricane. Uh, we went to Atlanta and stayed with some family members. The day after the event, uh, we realized how bad by watching the TV of the magnitude of the event that happened um, and the area that impacted that we definitely was in the middle of all the, the the flooding and everything so it was like a day or so two days phone lines you couldn't get through we, you know we tried to, tried to call text was basically the best method to call family members uh, we finally got through about two days after with our agent um, and we come to find out that they were okay in at um, at their location. We did come back two weeks after the event to see what was the damage. At that time, <clears throat> Katrina had happened and then it was like a week after um, Rita happened. Um, we did have water, about eight feet of water in the house. Uh, our house was a slab home, so we had about eight feet. We lost all our things. Um, the first initial thought or when we got to the house was the doors were wide open because um, the police had gone door to door. Um, so when we walked in, it was like all our furniture um, was all over the place. The walls were just crumbling by themselves because they were still wet from both events. What broke my heart the most is we had left pictures and we had left um, my, my children's baby books. All of that was lost. Um, my, my daughter at the time was like nine and my son was two. We did call our agent, which was Classic Insurance, Jessica Murillo. We went over the policy. Um, we, did, we did take all our paperwork, so thank God we had all those uh, in, in hand. Um, so we called our agent, uh, which was Classic Insurance, and they helped us through the process. I cried on the phone. You know, they kind of reassured us that they were going to find out, you know, what we need to do, what was the next step. Just basically, like, I just need that reassurance from my agent saying, like, what are we moving on and what are we doing next? Um, so basically that's what we did. Um, she's like, she said she called me back in a couple of days. She was going to get out the information. I had some information, but not everything because we had left the paperwork at home, not all of it. Um, so a few days later she did call me, told me what the policy entailed. 
who was my policy with and what we were going to go move forward with uh, the flood or the homeowners. My interaction with the, my agent with Jessica and Classic Insurance has been personal. I've had a relationship with the company since I've had my homeowners with them um, since the beginning that we bought our house. At the time, uh, after Katrina, we decided to demolish our, our home that we have and we went with a modular type of home to replace the house we had before and we continue to have um, our insurance with Classic Insurance. At the time, we wasn't sure how it was going to work with the city as far as if it was going to be able to do a modular home, you know, called Jessica, what kind of policies was able to get. She worked with me as far as, you know, taking pictures, uh, what I needed, uh, what are the different plans and premiums to go over, and, you know. So basically, they were always, always helpful, helpful to me and along the way. I wouldn't have been able to recover through Katrina. Uh, if it wasn't for Classic Insurance and Jessica with their help that they've done um, along the way and just keeping us, up, you know, abroad with all the, the changes and everything that we had to do as far as with our insurance plan and our new insurance plan. Not quite a month later, another storm was brewing and agents in southwest Louisiana were tested as well. I'll never forget, uh, I was um, woken up at about, uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning, a little after 4 in the morning. And uh, it was uh, the weather service. They had just received the official forecast. It was a 4 o'clock forecast. And the track had shifted from the Freeport area up to around High Island. And I'll never forget him telling me this. He said, Mayor, he said, we think, and he meant the local forecast, for forecasters in the local office. He said, we think it's going to get much closer to Lake Charles. So we scrambled at that point. I mean, it was, it was a pretty much, you know, uh, all hands on deck, so to speak. And uh, we went to the, uh, the, our office of OEP. We all gathered together. We, we, we conferenced in. We had different mayors from different communities and different areas, and all, all, the, all the folks were in the room. The sheriff from the school, everybody else was there. And we made the decision uh, at around 5.30, we made the decision for a mandatory evacuation. And at that time, the storm was about 180 mile an hour winds. And we knew it was coming, as close as it was coming, no matter what happened, we knew we were, we were in for a pretty bad storm. The storm was pretty bad, uh, much worse than I think anybody ever expected, uh, both in terms of water and wind. I, I often say that, that, uh, that Ike was a, a storm of, of water Rita was a storm of wind, and the winds got pretty pretty bad. And uh, of course, our neighbors to the south in Cameron Parish were devastated. It, it, and that's really kind of one of the untold stories about this whole storm. Um, it devastated Cameron Parish. Cameron has never been a large parish in terms of population, but in terms of the of the people and in terms of the of the economic significance to the to the state of Louisiana with all the offshore industry that is based out of Cameron, it's a pretty major area. But it was devastated by that storm. And even to this day, 10 years later, uh, if, you, if you knew Cameron then, if you knew it before the storm, the Cameron of today is nothing like it used to be. Uh, the storm was, uh, was still moving through for, for, for several hours after the, after the eye of the storm actually passed. We got out at about, I think the eye of the storm passed over this area right around 2.15, I think, around 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and then uh, about four hours later, we actually got up and got out. Probably shouldn't have, but we did. We couldn't stay inside any longer. The winds had, had subsided to a relative degree. Um, but we got out and uh, we, dev we, we surveyed the area and, and it, 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 was, it, was, it was devastating. Uh, I, I, I can't describe it, the, the, the destruction that you see. If you look at these maps right here, I mean, the, the pictures, the first photograph here, you can barely see the I-10 bridge in the background. Now that is taken after the eye of the storm has passed. And this railing that you see here is the railing at the, at the Civic Center. You see, that's the lake, that is Lake Charles. And uh, that is probably a storm, at that point in time, that storm surge is probably, uh, we're about 25, 26 miles inland, and that storm surge is running about 12 feet. Right about there, it's about 12 feet. Uh, so you can see the power of the wind that's just that's driving that. Uh, 
that, that water and the damage that was done. You look over here, this is all, this is on the lake. Uh, this is right behind Wildlife and Fisheries Building and it just destroyed their boathouse and everything that they had in the back uh, of their building. That was destroyed and the metal buildings of lot knocked over and you see uh, how that was destroyed. Right here is our Isle of Capri. Um, that, that's one of the riverboat casinos. Um, they, were, they were spared major damage by the storm. Unfortunately, the, uh, the other casino, which was the Harris Casino, Harris Riverboat Casino, which was located on the north shore of Lake Charles, their boat, uh, their two boats actually, were, were, were actually lifted up and moved over and brought back down on the shore of the lake. Uh, totally destroyed their operation. And of course, this picture here, uh, this is downtown Lake Charles. Uh, you can see that there's some of the windows that were some of the storefronts that were boarded up uh, before the storm, but all the awnings ripped and just the, the glass and debris uh, that were in there. Rita was almost a month later, and it was, you know, on the backs of this, it was another huge storm. In fact, but for Katrina, Rita would be our biggest uh, event here in Louisiana. So it was a very severe storm in its own right, and to have two back-to-back -back uh, taxed a lot of the uh, rescue efforts, but once again, our agents were able to to help their insureds uh, get in touch with their companies and start the claims process. The insurers paid policyholders for damage caused by Katrina $25.3 billion in our state. That's not including NFIP uh, payments for in flood insured property. And then three weeks later, Hurricane uh, Rita brought another $3.3 billion in payments to property owners with insurance in place uh, for the devastation caused by that event. And in addition to that, the NFIP paid $15 billion in losses to uh, properties that were insured for flood through uh, the National Flood Insurance Program. My name is Ryan Reeves. It's Reeves Uptown Catering is my business, and we've been in business for 13 years. Uh, when I first realized Rita was going to hit, we were on vacation, watching it very closely, and noticed it was going to uh, jog to the east, and wasn't sure how bad it was going to be until uh, I started getting a bunch of phone calls from in town, and realized I had to cut my vacation short and get back as quickly as possible. Uh, when we did, um, Business was not damaged, but we were shut down. Uh, cooler loss was extensive, and we were able to get with the insurance agency and get things rolling immediately. It was great to have a local agent that we could get in contact with, uh, knew the city, was in the city, and was immediately able to help us and get hands on with us. It was great. We were shut down. Uh, we didn't have power. I'm not sure anybody had power. Uh, and we needed, we had a tremendous cooler loss and a, uh, we were out of business for quite a while and had business loss. The business loss insurance helped out a lot. Uh, it, it really got us back going when we were able to. We finally got power and were cleared by the uh, Department of Health and Hospitals to start uh, serving food. We were one of the first in the area and it was a tremendous help. It was a big boost for business. One of the lessons of Hurricane Katrina and Rita is uh, accessibility uh, for our clients to be able to get in touch with us. Uh, technology has, has greatly helped us uh, achieve that uh, measure of communication with our clients. Also, our uh, computer system, our management system has um, been enhanced to where all of the customer's information is accessible by any one of our remote offices across our footprint across the southeast uh, United States. So if one area of state is affected by a storm, another area where our offices are located remotely can access the customer information, reach out and contact the customer um, by phone or by email uh, to see if they've had a claim and take the information needed to file the claim. Another thing that uh, has helped is a lot is the centralization of all the carrier's claim contact information. Uh, we've been able to centralize all that information, again, so one of our remote offices can contact the customer, get the claim information, and then contact the carrier to file the claim, even if it's not a carrier that 
they presently do business with uh, in that area. So that has greatly helped us uh, prepare for the next Katrina Arena. I think one of the, uh, the benefits of, of the customer relationship with their agent is uh, that we know that customer. We know the risk, we know the property, we know where it's located, we know the type of property that could be in, impacted by a storm. Um, unlike if you're uh, purchasing something online, um, the, the party on the other end of the phone or other, other end of the computer system, they don't know that you have an outbuilding that may be affected um, that's um, come under, come, you know, been damaged and, and needs, needs some work. Um, the, the customer relationship that we have um, really goes to, to great lengths to get to know our clients, get to know their risk, and, and get to know what, um, what in perils could impact their business. Rita, you know, we were all impacted by Katrina. Uh, we were one of the places where Katrina people were evacuated too, and then the evacuation had to happen here to get rid of those people and get them to safety because Rita was uh, heading toward us. Uh, a scary storm and certainly all the stories coming out of southeast Louisiana had us on edge because we had a fresh reminder of how damaging a uh, hurricane could be. And, uh, and Rita was an ugly woman headed our way. Uh, sometime before the storm hit, we knew that we were going to have damage, so uh, we send people away and then tell them to come back. It was a very scary evening with lots of crazy noises and wind blowing on, on and around that building. Uh, sometime during the night when we saw things flying by that we could see fly by at night, we, we knew we had a serious storm on our hands. Of course, the building I was in had tornado damage, which just compounds the, uh, the hurricane. So we knew that we were in trouble that evening. And when the sun came up the next morning, it, it just, everything was a mess. It was a wreck. Uh, there were places that were difficult to have figured out where you were. Uh, and I've only lived here all my life. So it was pretty scary. Fortunately, we had an office to come back to, but we had lots of people that had damage. We do business over several parishes, uh, several thousand customers, like, write a lot of homeowners and a fair amount of business insurance, and we had thousands of claims. The biggest thing that I got out of uh, the hurricane was that it brings the best out of people, and, uh, and my people were excellent. My customers were good. I was incredibly pleased with uh, with my customers. But the thing that impressed me and the, the lingering thing, I think, is what I call my aha moment. And, and it happened, and it wasn't a, a split second that it happened. It happened over a period of days, and that was when I realized what we're doing and what we do all the time suddenly was really important. Uh, it made a difference in people's lives. It, you know, if you tear somebody's house up, you've done something really bad. And we were in a position, and it took time, but we were in a position to help them to fix those things. So you got a $1,000 claim, it's bad. You get a $10,000 claim, it's, it's pretty bad. You get a seventy-five dollars or $100,000 claim, your life has been wrecked. So for me, the aha was, oh, this is when we really matter. This is when what we do year in, year out, the mundane years, really makes a difference. You got to do those things in the mundane years so that when you have the bad year, you're ready, you're prepared, your companies are ready, and what we do makes a difference. On the front door of the office, uh, we've got a sticker emblem for the uh, PIA. PIA in this case is the Fre Professional Insurance Agents. So I'm a member of the State Association and the National Association and currently serve on the PIA Board of Directors. It's a great group of people. They're uh, always working to improve the industry and make ourselves better and more important to our customers. Uh, the relationship we have with the customers is important. The relationship we have with the companies is very important. It's kind of a three-legged stool. You've got companies, customers, and you've got the agents in the middle. And so it's a very important piece of our culture and who we are and why we do things the way we do. I guess the biggest lessons we learned with Katrina and Rita was preparedness, to be prepared for the situation that you 
may think will never happen. As we learned, it can happen. So meet with your insureds, go over their needs, look at their businesses, look at their homes, look at their coverages, and talk to them about what their needs are and what their expectations are. Do you have enough loss of income? Do you have enough coverage on your building? Is your flood limit high enough? Are you comfortable with your deductibles? All the time trying to balance that with the cost of the insurance. Those kind of things became critical after the storm. And so to avoid confusion and in some cases disagreements, the best thing you can do is to be prepared and have those conversations prior to the catastrophe. I know, I agree with you 100%. One of the lessons that we really learned was is to have all the communication you can possibly get from someone. You know, in 2005, texting was kind of a new deal, but it worked every time. I learned how to text after Katrina. That's right. <laughs> Cell phones were virtually useless except for the texting. 800 lines were down. It was amazing, even though we were all in the email age still, how few emails we really had of people. Almost like they were afraid to give them to you that you're going to get spammed at some point. But now, when any, any, whenever anybody comes to the office, the first thing is, let me update your communication information. Do you have a home phone? Do you have a cell number? Do you have an email? Do you have a work email? Do you have a work phone number? Do you have a second number that I can get in touch with somebody in case I have to find you? Like us on Facebook. Exactly. All of those the things are useful now. It's so much greater today. It really is so much greater. But like anything, we have to be able to use it because not like the internet, we're still in the hometown. We're still in the schools. We're still in the streets. We're still in the playgrounds. We're still at the churches. We are not what the internet is. We are still local. And to me, I think that makes all the difference in the world. Well, I think you're right, Richie. That's what we provide as professional insurance agents. You can buy uh, insurance on the internet 24 hours a day now, but that 1-800 number after that storm isn't going to come out and meet with you. You know, that 1-800 number is going to be a difficult thing to deal with versus an independent professional insurance agent who you can see and touch and reach when you need them. Right. One of the things we were fortunate with is uh, it's not a commodity. Uh, we had one insured that, uh, and actually a, an adjuster from another company sent me, e me an email and said, I think I saw one of your insureds in a shelter in Alexandria. And I said, okay, well, let me see if I can get in touch with him. So I got the number for the shelter. I called up there and I said, is so-and-so staying with you right now? And it was a gymnasium in Alexandria. And he said, yes, we do. I said, well, if she's there, if you could, could you go get her and put her on the phone? Uh, so just a couple of minutes later, she came to the phone. Who's this? I said, this is Richie. I've got all your insurance policies. I know what's going on. If you go to this location, you can get a $1,500 advance on your insurance so that you can maybe get into a hotel or something. And for her, it made all the difference in the world because her mother drowned in a nursing home in St. Bernard Parish during the storm. So her life was truly upside down, and we were able to help at just a little bit to maybe get her life back to normal. And you won't get that on the Internet. No. I don't know that you ever really get over any of this kind of stuff. You just kind of get along with it. That's it. You never forget, but you move on right. and try to be better prepared next time. Right. One of the uh, the benefits in, in dealing with an independent agent is the uh, companies that we can access uh, in different areas uh, to purchase insurance for our clients or to uh, have our clients have access to. Um, as you know, after storms, companies react in different ways. Some pull back the wind coverage, some discontinue wind coverage, some put restrictions on properties uh, based on uh, their location for wind coverage. And with an independent agent, you're able to uh, go to different companies and provide our client with multiple choices. Uh, whereas sometimes uh, direct riders, if the wind coverage is, is restricted, they have no options. Uh, so that's why I think the, the independent agency relationship uh, with the client is, uh, is superior in that we're able to shop the client's business to multiple insurance carriers to provide the, the client with the, the best possible case scenario. The 
purchase of insurance is a very complex, very important part of anyone's life, both at home and in the workplace. It's very complex, it's very expensive, and absolutely vital. So to try to do that on your own is kind of like um, changing your transmission uh, by yourself. Unless you're really an expert yourself, you need the advice and counsel of someone who can advise you as to what your need is, which, what coverages you should have in place, and frankly, what you do not need, and how to shop and compare price being one aspect, and the quality of the coverage and the company you might buy your insurance from being another. But uh, the, the coverages, I, for example, tell folks all the time to not buy insurance that you don't need, to self-insure for anything you can afford to take the risk on personally, such as the highest deductible that you can afford, because with a higher deductible comes a lower premium. So those are the, the things that a professional agent can assist you with, can guide you through, that's absolutely essential both at home and in the workplace. As we saw during Katrina and Rita, the, the help and guidance and the tenacity of having an insurance agent working for you with your claim was uh, a very uh, necessary element, I think, to the speed with which we were able to recover here in Louisiana. Uh, if you buy your policy online, then I don't know where you're going to go for the assistance that you're going to need to to help you with your claim. Now the company will send adjusters out, they will do things to help you, but when you have that agent making those phone calls, making the inquiries, doing the follow-up, I think it's crucial for people today to have a good insurance agent that can help you through that process. Who looks at the fine print, you know? Not knowing what they're going to be covered for uh, is really tough when you're not here and everything's destroyed. So uh, you uh, took care of that for us. Well, Bobby, you mentioned, you know, to you, insurance is a lot of paperwork and just pay the premium when it's time. That's when it's time for us, when we have a, Kat a Katrina, a catastrophe, to deliver on that promise. Because what we're selling to you at the time seems to you like a piece of paper. Right. It's just a promise. Right. But that's when the time that we have to deliver on the promises that we sell. My advice after Katrina would be that you discuss your insurance needs with an agent, uh, explain what your expectations are in the event of a catastrophe, and let them tailor fit the insurance needs to what your needs will be in the event of that disaster. Be prepared, have a destination in mind to evacuate to, and, and uh, first and foremost, protect your family and yourself, and then also prepare to file a claim if necessary after uh, the, the event has passed through. And the first step in being prepared is to have your policy information with you wherever you are uh, relocated to in order to get out of harm's way. The stories you have just heard are just a small representation of the thousands of insurance consumers and their agents who lived out similar scenarios following Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. I'm sure if you were affected by one or both of these storms, you have your own story to tell. As professional insurance agents, we may not sell the flashiest product. It's not something you can wrap in a pretty little package. But when it's needed, like it was in the aftermath of Katrina and Rita, it feels good to know we help our clients get their lives back in order. Insurance is complex, and the last thing you want to deal with when you're living through a devastating event like the loss of your home or business. You'll want someone who is going to step in and be your advocate, which was the job of our many professional insurance agents. We are proud that our customers, in our customers' greatest time of need, we were able to fulfill the promise we sold. The security and assurance offered by our professional insurance agents cannot be found on the internet or at the end of an 800 number. You'll want to know you're not just a number, but that you're dealing with someone who lives in your community and shares your personal experiences. And people know when they need help to insure their home, their automobile, their businesses, their very way of life, it's best to go to someone they know and trust. 
their local professional insurance agent. For more information, please visit our website.